Okay, here we go. Oh gosh. Tyler Kent Anderson. Today's the day we've been waiting for. Every single day for the last nine months has led us here. Today is the day we become one forever. Your character, kindness, thoughtfulness, encouragement, and desire to put Christ first in everything adds indescribable joy to my life. I can't wait to spend all my days with you and call you my husband forever. I could not be prouder of the man that you are. You mean so much to me, and now I have a lifetime to show you just how much. Is everything going okay over there? Someone's doing fireworks. It's January 2nd. Um, <laughs> I'm so thankful for you, uh, for loving me so well, for pursuing me always and for choosing to spend your life with me. You make me love Jesus more, and I'm the luckiest girl in the world to call you mine. I'm praying right now that this Bible will be falling apart at the seams from a lifetime of reliance on it. I can't wait to spend time in the Word with you and grow closer to the Lord every single day. As we near eternity, there is no one else I would rather partner in this life with than you. I can tell you right now, you're the most handsome groom anyone has ever laid eyes on, and you're all mine. You're my best friend, and I can't wait to spend the rest of my life chasing hard after the Lord with you and living life the way he intended it to be. I love you with my whole heart, Tyler Anderson. Let's get married. Amen to that. I like that one. <laughs> Sorry, I jumped to it. Do you want me to start? Yeah. Okay. Dear Hannah, this gift, while not requiring near as much money, at t money to acquire as your rings, nor <laughs> requiring near as much craft craftsmanship as something made by hand is more important than any gift I have gotten you thus far in our relationship. One of the first things that drew me to you on our first date was your love for reading and understanding God's word. For over two years of dating, I saw you consistently dive into God's word, always making a habit of taking notes down about his character and how the words of scripture apply to your life. Whenever I hear you talk about scripture, I leave feeling more uplifted and encouraged by God's words and the wisdom that I see you glean from them. Here are a few things I'm praying over us on this day and going forward. I pray that as we search for satisfaction, we would find it in Christ alone and not in something that seems more expedient. I pray that when darkness overwhelms us and the tide of life rises, it is well will be what compels us. And I pray that following Jesus wherever he leads would be our greatest pleasure and goal. For no matter, the, no matter the weather I face, Lord, you never forsake. My fragile life is safe under your sovereign grace. As we enter into this lifelong covenant together, I pray that our souls will never cease to be amazed by the goodness of our God. Our hope is not built on a fantasy. It's built on a reality. It's a living hope that is here to guide us together towards eternity. I love you. I love you, Hannah, always. Tyler. <laughs> so sweet. Should I tap? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 no one should cry. That's too early. That is true. <laughs>
Ooh. Hey, what's up? Hey. How you doing? Hi. I'm, I'm kind of good. Oh my gosh. I love you. Oh my goodness. Well, my hands are cold. I don't know why. I, I, you're probably really pretty. I'm going to see you in like a second. Are we doing? Are we doing this thing? We're about to do this thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! Holy cow! Whoa! This thing! Whoa! Oh my gosh! <laughs> My voice just cracked. I love you. Oh. I didn't know if I was going to cry. And I'm crying a lot. You are gorgeous, Hannah. So oh handsome. Gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you look so handsome. Oh, your dress is like, you're so cool. Oh, look at the back. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad that I don't wear makeup because I would, I'd be losing it right now. Oh, you are so pretty. Oh, I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry, I don't want to get lipstick on you. Lipstick I'm so my lips. sorry. Okay. <laughs> I just want to kiss you. I want to kiss you too. <sighs> oh my we're goodness. I know we're getting married. How do you what feel? What the heck? I'm excited. Me too. I'm nervous. <laughs> <sighs> what? <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know how I landed you. <laughs> my gosh. Oh, okay. Ah. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> okay, what are we supposed to do now? Yeah, can, let's let's just pray real quick, please. Okay, um, dear Father, um, oh, it's hard to pray when you're crying. Um, God, we just thank you so much for this time. Uh, thank God that you ordained. <laughs> This is really hard. Oh, okay. uh, God, you, uh, you planned this time before we were even born. Um, when you were creating the world, God, you set this time into being. Um, we just pray for the rest of the day that God, someone would come, would come to Christ tonight because of our influence. <laughs> you were worried that I wasn't going to cry. <sighs> God, we just thank you for this relationship. We thank you for Hannah. Um, and just, God, how beautiful you've made her uh, inside and out. God, her character is so attractive. Um, and I just can't believe that, God, you've, you've created her uh, for me to spend the rest of my life with. Father, we love you and we trust you. Um, as we spend the rest of our night together and the rest of our lives together, that you will be working through us and in us. We trust you. We thank you. In your son's name we pray, Amen. I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm so, I just snorted. Okay, let me get a rag and we'll go take some pictures. <laughs>
the Lord help me. Yeah, we're okay, right? Oh, hi. Yeah, I am ready. It is good. Yeah. There's nothing like that in all the world. You look beautiful. Thank you. And you don't look too bad yourself. I'll, I'll take it. And Jerry, you did a great job getting her down the aisle. Congratulations. <laughs> Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. <laughs> so the day is finally here. We've waited for this, and as we come to this very special moment, you're surrounded by family and friends who love you and care for you very deeply. Everyone here celebrates with you God's goodness and grace in bringing you to this day. Mm -hmm. This day has been prayed for by both of you and certainly by your parents since the day you were born. Today is a day of commitment. It is God's ordained plan that the two of you would come together on this day to be united in marriage. All of us are here today to witness this commitment and to pledge our continued prayers and support as you embark on this amazing journey as husband and wife. The Bible teaches that marriage is to be a sacred covenant between one man and one woman who are totally committed to each other as companions for life. And the two of you are a shining example of the reality that God's way is always the best way. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege of being here today. Thank you for this incredible couple. Thank you for your plan to bring them together to be husband and wife. God, thank you for their parents. Thank you for their friends. Thank you for your grace and your goodness in bringing us to this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Amen. Amen. As you're both well aware, marriage is not a man-made institution. But instead, it was God's idea that began with this statement in Genesis 2.18. It is not good that man should be alone. God didn't just leave us to solve this problem on our own, but instead His design and plan from the very beginning was that we would first live in relationship with Him and then in relationship with each other in this sacred covenant that we call marriage. A few verses later in Genesis 2, it says, And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. This very first marriage ceremony back in the garden, which created the very first family, was established by God as the biblical pattern for us to follow. Mm -hmm. Jesus affirmed this pattern in Matthew chapter 19 when he quoted this passage from Genesis 2 saying, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Then Jesus added, so they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let not man separate. The marriage commitment you are making to each other today is serious business because God designed it to be an exclusive lifetime commitment between a man and a woman that would allow you both to grow in your love for God and for each other and to show the world what God's love is truly like. Mm -hmm. This kind of love is eternal rather than temporary. It's self-sacrificing rather than self-serving and it's focused on giving rather than on taking. The Apostle Paul described this love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 when he said, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. Then in Ephesians chapter 5, Paul says marriage is actually intended to be a reflection of the love that Jesus has for his bride, the church. In fact, as husband and wife, 
you are to love and cherish each other just as Christ does his church because your love for each other will be a bright light in a dark world that desperately needs to know the love of Jesus. Wouldn't it be amazing to get to heaven one day and meet people there who discovered the love that Jesus has for them because of the way the two of you loved each other mm -hmm. and reflected his love to others in every area of your marriage. Yeah. This is not just my charge to you today. This is God's charge to you. And that leads us to the portion of the ceremony where you will make vows to each other and to God. So if you'll hand that to Haley. <clears throat> Hannah and Tyler, following God's design in every area of life and marriage is the way for you to experience everything he intended for your life and marriage to be. Mm -hmm. You are making a vow today, a solemn promise to God and to each other to honor this commitment for the rest of your lives. Tyler, will you take Hannah as your wedded wife and choose to love her with Christ being your example and guide in the covenant of holy matrimony? I will. Hannah, will you take Tyler as your wedded husband and choose to love him with Christ being your example and guide in the covenant of holy matrimony? I will. Tyler, please repeat after me. I, Tyler, take you, Hannah. I, Tyler, take you, Hannah. To be my lawfully wedded wife. To be my lawfully wedded wife. I promise before God and these witnesses. I promise before God and these witnesses. To live together with you. To live together with you. After God's own design. After God's own design. I will be loyal and true to you. I will be loyal and true to you. In every condition of life. In every condition of life. I pledge my love to you. I pledge my love to you. Just as Christ loves his church. Just as Christ loves his church. Until death do us part until death do us part. And Tyler, you have also written vows to Hannah, so I would like for you to read those to her now. Oh, I hope I can get through these, here we go. <laughs> um, Hannah Marie Gosser. Oh, I'm already gonna cry, good grief. Uh, King Solomon asked in Proverbs 31.10, a wife of noble character who can find, for she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and she lacks nothing of value. On Saturday, June 9th, 2018, I was texting while driving out of the Pine Cove Christian Camp property, and I almost T-boned a white Lexus who was also leaving. As I slammed on my brakes, I got a glimpse of a beautiful brunette driving that Lexus. As I thought I recognized her from somewhere, so after some stalking on Instagram, I found out that it was, in fact, the girl that I had seen in some of my friend's pictures. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> figuring I would never see her again, I wrote it off as a rare glimpse of an angel, but little did I know that girl that I almost collided into would be the woman God had chosen for me to spend the rest of my life with. Hannah, you are more beautiful than any woman I could have ever imagined marrying in every aspect of the word. You are kind beyond belief, you are sweeter than I deserve, and you are quick to forgive and mend what is broken. And you embody Ephesians 4, 2 so well when it says, be completely humble and gentle, patient, bearing with one another in love. Every room is brighter when you walk in. Every conversation is deeper when you, when you give words to it. And every heart is glad when you extend your arms to give a hug, especially to me. Because <laughs> I like your hugs. <laughs> uh, when you realize that my obsession with catching little green fish was not going away, uh, instead of running away in fear, as you could have, uh, you leaned in and supported me in my crazy path. You are my greatest teammate, both in how you cheer me on when I need encouragement, but also how you kindly correct me when I have lost my way. By marrying you, I now get the privilege to have a teammate for life, and I look forward to the freedom found in community with the one God has made for me. Ben Stewart said that freedom, <laughs> freedom is not the absence of boundaries, it's the ability to fulfill created intent. Scripture says that my created intent in marriage is to serve you even to the point of death, which I vow to do. I vow to always be faithful to you, to always cheer for you, to always fight for you, and to always provide for you. I promise to always value my relationship with Jesus more than my relationship with you, as without him, I cannot love you in the way that he designed me to. <laughs> I'm not even done. I'm not even done yet. All right. I will set the example. <laughs> so I'm so close. I will set the example for you and our children of what a godly man should look like, and I will always look to Jesus first when leading you 
and our family, for in order to be a source of life free to you, I have to be connected to the source of life. I will love you and you alone for as long as God has us here on this earth, which I hope is a really long time. It's my joy, Hannah, to honor you as my wife, and I pray every day that I will make you feel cherished and cared for. What love I have, I give to you, my sweet Hannah. So at this point, I think I've answered King Solomon's first question. A wife, noble character, who can find? I have found you. (laughs) Okay, her turn now. How am I supposed to follow that? I don't understand. Thank you very much. Uh, (laughs) Hannah, please repeat after me if you can. I, Hannah, take you, Tyler. I, Hannah, take you, Tyler. To be my lawfully wedded husband. To be my lawfully wedded husband. I promise before God and these witnesses. I promise before God and these witnesses. To live together with you. To live together with you. After God's own design. After God's own design. I will be loyal and true to you. I will be loyal and true to you. In every condition of life. In every condition of life. I pledge my love to you. I pledge my love to you. Just as Christ loves his church. Just as Christ loves his church. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. And now it's your turn. <laughs> you got I this, baby. follow that. You got this. You got more work than I do. <laughs> Tyler Ken Anderson. When I prayed for my future husband, I prayed for a man who genuinely loves Jesus with every piece of himself and that he actively pursues Jesus with every second of every day. I also prayed that he would be incredibly handsome, smart, funny, and just about every good quality that a man could have. But honestly, I didn't believe that the Lord would actually give me a man who actually checks off every single one of those things and so much more. Tyler, you are everything I've ever prayed for. You are a wink to me from the Lord as he says to me, didn't I tell you that if you delight yourself in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. You are my best friend, my biggest encourager, my favorite boy, and my answered prayer. (laughs) From the moment you called me to invite me on our first date, to this moment as we stand here committing our lives to each other in front of all of our friends and family, There has never been a moment where you have been unclear about your feelings towards me and your intentions for our relationship. You have endlessly pursued me and loved me so well, and you are an earthly touch of the Lord's pursuit after me. You are a gift from the Lord. Your positivity, joy, and love for life is contagious, and it is so evidently comes from the Lord. Your desire to know the Lord and for others to know him more is inspiring to me and everyone around you. You are quick to forgive and even quicker to ask for forgiveness. You know the power of prayer and you are so quick to act in it. You're the hardest worker and the most trustworthy man I have ever met. You are bold and you never fail to stand for what you believe in. You're the most well-rounded person and the only person I know who has the drive to do everything and do every single one of those things so well. You sing praises so loudly before the Lord, and you don't care what anyone thinks about it. You are constantly seeking to be a better man of God, and you are equally strong and gentle. You love me no matter what I look like, no matter what I've said or done, and no matter what kind of day it's been. You love Jesus so much more than you love me. I want to spend every single good day and every single bad day with you, and you give me strength and encouragement to do every hard thing. And as we stand here in front of our friends and family and enter into this covenant under God, these are my promises to you. I promise to keep Christ at the center of our relationship and everything we do. I vow to believe in you always, to encourage you, to support you, and to be your biggest fan. I promise to be your forever fishing buddy. I promise to love you unconditionally no matter how I feel, no matter how old we are, no matter how sick we are, and no matter any circumstance that may come our way. I pledge to never go to bed angry and to be quick to forgive and to be quick to ask for forgiveness. I promise to pursue peace within our marriage. I promise to strive after Jesus with you every day and to fight for the life he's called us to live. I promise to use our marriage to honor the Lord with everything and to use our marriage as representation of who he is to us. 
I promise to always strive to outserve you in the serving competition. <laughs> I vow to be your partner in ministry and to sing with you, even though I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I promise to remain faithful to you and to choose you all the days of my life. I vow to continue to pray with you and for you. And I am overwhelmed by the Lord's kindness that he would give me you to share this life with. To know you is to know Jesus better. Thank you for challenging me, for pursuing me, and for choosing me. It is by the Lord's perfect grace that he has brought us here today. And the joy that has come from pursuing Jesus with you is indescribable. You are everything I have ever dreamed of and more. And I'm so proud to call you mine, Tyler. I take you to be my husband to have and to hold today and every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> ah, good grief. Thank you. Can I give you that? And could I have the rings, please? Thank you very much. The wedding ring is a symbol of eternity. It's an outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond which unites two hearts in endless love. Tyler, please take this ring and place it on Hannah's finger and repeat after me. Hannah, this ring is a symbol. Hannah, this ring is a symbol. Of my love and faithfulness to you. Of my love and faithfulness to you. I commit myself exclusively to you. I commit myself exclusively to you. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. Hannah, please take this ring and place it on Tyler's finger and repeat after me. Tyler, this ring is a symbol. Tyler, this ring is a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. Of my love and faithfulness to you. I commit myself exclusively to you. I commit myself exclusively to you. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. At this time, I would like to ask Tyler and Hannah's parents to come up, and we're going to have a time of prayer. And if you would, please join us in this time and uh, pray that God's blessing and favor would be on this marriage. We start this off. Okay. Father God, thank you for these two beautiful souls. Thank you for bringing them together. Thank you for knitting them together in the mother's womb. May you bless them, Father God. Just bless them and keep them and make your face to shine upon them and yeah. grace such a yeah, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for these two that you have brought together in the most miraculous way that they will knit themselves together as the third form. Yeah, yeah. Right? Be strong as a three-quarter strand. Go before them, lead them, guide them. Exactly. Help them to never lose their way of following you. Yeah. so good to us. We don't deserve this, God. We thank you for your goodness and your graciousness. And in our worst, God, you would die for us and allow us to live that out in marriage. 
And thank you, Father, for that. We're setting that example for us. And we're not going into this blind. We're going into this with a roadmap to follow. Your word and your spirit is here to guide us. We thank you for that, Father. In the book of James, there's an incredible promise that says, if we will draw near to God, he will draw near to us. The secret to the two of you staying close to each other for the rest of your lives is for each of you to continually, day by day, moment by moment, draw near to God. Mm-hmm. Tyler and Hannah, based on your commitment to each other, before God and these witnesses, and having pledged your love to each other for the rest of your lives, by the power vested in me, by the great state of Texas, and by God himself, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss your bride. Yes! Oh, you got a comb on the ground. Oh, no! Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Tyler Anderson. Yeah! Let's go. What are we doing because here? We're married now. Hannah, Hannah, look at this. Look at this. We're filming. We got married just now. We're married. Yes. I want you guys to make as much noise as possible. Let's give it up one time for Madison, Colton. And Caroline, let's make some noise for him right now. Give it up. Oh, let's make as much noise as possible. Let's give it up for Brooke and Alton, y'all. Let's make some noise for him. Let's make some noise one time right now for Lindsay and Grant. Let's make some noise for him. Now I want y'all to make a little bit loud. Just get a little bit louder, a little bit louder. Let's give it up for our maid of honor, Haley, and our best men, Garrison. Now I need everybody in the building on your feet right now. Everybody on your feet right now. I want y'all to give it up as loud as you can. Let's make some noise for the new Mr. and Mrs. Anderson. As we prepare to have our first dance from our beautiful bride and groom this evening. Look at his setup. I know. 
You're the best and you're beautiful. <laughs> and I can't believe I get to marry you. <laughs> For those of you that don't know me, my name is Jerry Gosser. I am the father of the bride. And be, on behalf of the Anderson and Gosser family, I want to welcome you. Thank you for being here. Your presence means so much to us. Um, and I know this time of 2020 and the pandemic has been such a challenge to so many people. But what better way to start 2021 than to see the union of two people who love each other so much and love the Lord? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing two people together who love each other and love the Lord the way Hannah do and Tyler do. Thank you for always being at the center of the relationship. We pray that people will see their marriage as a light of hope. We ask that you see them through life's journey and to be with them through any storm that they may face. We thank you for each and every one who are here tonight. We thank you for those who wanted to be here but could not. We ask that you bless the food that we will receive for our bodies. And we thank you for your son who died on the cross and rose from the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Haley. I'm Hannah's little sister and the maid of honor. Um, first, I just want to say welcome, everyone. We're so glad you're here. We're so thankful for each and every one of you that you're willing to come and celebrate Hannah and Tyler, the Anderson. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try really, really hard not to cry. <laughs> okay, um, being Hannah's little sister is truly such an honor in itself. Um, she's so radiant and kind, and people are just drawn to her because she's so loving. Mm -hmm. And if you've had a conversation with her, you know that she's always asking about you and really wanting to get to know you and how you're doing and it's genuine and she really cares and she's your biggest fan always um when i first came to baylor as a freshman and hannah was a sophomore um i was constantly asked are you hannah gosser's little sister i love her and i said yes i am hannah gosser's little sister and um one day someone came up to me and asked do you ever get tired of always being referred to as hannah gosher's little sister and not by your name and i was like no i'm so so proud to be hannah gosher's little sister it's such an honor so i still stand by that to this day i'm so proud to be your little sister um, when i heard hannah was going on dates with a boy named tyler i immediately did my research as any protective little sister would all content. I knew is that his name was Tyler Anderson and that he was pretty popular on YouTube. <laughs> so one day um, in my house in Waco, me and my roommates were sitting downstairs and I looked his name up on YouTube. 
And it wasn't his fishing channel that came up first, it was another channel of his, and it was him singing a cover of Build My Life, and I immediately said to my roommates, they're gonna get married. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I had never met Tyler, but from what I saw in his video, I could tell that he loved Jesus more than anything, and I thank God that that was true. Hannah, you are gentle, kind-hearted, steadfast, faithful, honest, and genuine. Having a big sister is something so, so special, but having you as my big sister, words can't describe how thankful and lucky I am. When I need you, you are always there, providing me with such wisdom and truth a voice of reason when I need it most. No one is perfect, but in my eyes you truly do have no flaws. I look up to you more than anyone that I know. I've pictured this day since we were little girls and I still can't believe that it's here. You found someone to run this race and fulfill Christ's mission with. I could not be more proud to be your little sister and I could not be happier for you. I know you're gonna be the most amazing wife. Mm. Tyler. <laughs> your heart for Jesus was evident in the first video I watched of you worshiping. It's evident in your joy, your work ethic, and the way you love my sister. Y'all push each other to follow Jesus daily. You added something so special to our family, and I'm so happy I can finally call you my brother-in-law. <laughs> I can't imagine someone more perfect for her. Hannah and Tyler, I love you both. I can't wait to see your marriage grow, and I can't wait to watch y'all begin a new life together. I pray this verse over you, 1 Peter 4.8. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. Love wins in the battle of evil always. I pray that any trials you face together, that you always act in love as Jesus does for us. I love you both. I wish you nothing but the best. So let's raise a glass. <laughs> and here's to Hannah and Tyler Anderson. <laughs> yeah. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> There it is. Okay, so my name is Garrison Thomas. If you don't know me, I have got the privilege of fishing with Tyler and being one of his good friends for the past four years. Um, so forgive me if I mess this up a little bit. Tyler's normally one in front of the camera. I'm just here for the thumbnail. <laughs> That's good. No, so I still remember the first time I met Tyler. I walked up to um, an Aggie Anglers meeting as a freshman in, a freshman in college, not high school. Um, and I've never seen 15 men surround a guy like I have Tyler. You had 15 guys fanboying around him, talking about YouTube and talking about fishing. And, you know, the uh, mature man that I am, I waited to the very end to walk up and introduce myself to Tyler. And I was like, hey, man, I'm Garrison. I'm a freshman. And for some reason, he chose to fish with me for the next two years of, um, of college. And... Let me tell you, there are some long car rides in traveling um, that involve going to different tournaments. We went to California, we went to New York, we went to, I mean, basically all across the globe. I, I, it was crazy. Um, but you spend a lot of time in the car and, you know, just getting to know him in his heart was, was such a gift. And I remember talking early on just about our relationship status. Um, I, I was dating a girl at the time and he was like, yeah, man, I haven't really dated anyone in college. You know, I don't really know if things are going to work out for me and I might just go into the into the real world single um, and and I kid you not three months later we'd been going to breakaway together pretty consistently and he was like hey man can you save me uh, in three more seats at breakaway tonight and and normally that was that was a common occurrence he was like he would bring a few of his bros and, and he, he made sure to slide in there there's gonna be three girls with me um, <laughs> and and one so special one. <laughs> no, <laughs> not in a weird way but <laughs> No, but um, I, see, I see Tyler and, and Hannah walking down, and, and I kind of did a double take. I, I, was, I was confused because I didn't know they were setting Tyler up with a model. If you've seen <laughs> Hannah, I was like, what in the world? Like, who set this guy up with her? Um, <laughs> That's true. That's true. No, so they walked down and worshipped, and, and it was just really cool to see kind of from that moment on Tyler and Hannah's uh, relationship just kind of flourish. Um, Tyler would keep going down to Waco, and she would keep coming down to College Station. Um, and they just continually grew, uh, just with like long distance. I don't know if I don't know about y'all, but I don't think I could do long distance. They're, they're just special. Um, and, and, you know, individually, they're super special people. Tyler is one of the most sacrificial people I've ever met in my entire life. Um, 
literally every single time I think I get in the car, he gives me a phone call just asking me about how my life's going, just catching up with me. Um, and, and there's not, there's seriously not a day I feel like that goes by that he doesn't shoot me a text or, or just give me something encouraging. And Hannah's the same way, such a joyful person, super kind. Um, every single time I just leave a conversation with her, you know, it, she just lights up the room. Um, and them, them as a couple is even more special. It's just such a gift to be standing up here. And obviously y'all have had an impact on people when this many people show up to a wedding in the middle of COVID. So like, <laughs> It just, it's just super honoring for me to um, just get to have a best friend like him and get to experience um, what a relationship really should look like um, and, and two people chasing after Christ harder than, chase, than they're chasing after each other. So I just wanted to read a verse for them or verse kind of over them. These words are a lot more important than anything I could say, um, but it is Mark 10, 6 through 9. It says, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let, mon- let not man separate. What a beautiful picture this is to see um, them just getting married today and becoming one flesh. Um, and what a beautiful picture it is that Jesus Christ got sent down to this earth just to live a life that we didn't deserve. Um, and this is just a really cool representation of that. So um, before I get off the stage and, and toast to y'all, I just wanted to pray for y'all real quick. So if y'all bow your heads, uh, that'd be a gift for me. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for Tyler and Hannah, um, what they obviously mean to so many people here. Um, I'm excited to see personally what the relationship is going to bring and the people that are going to be impacted by the relationship. Um, God, I pray that you just bless them as they go on their honeymoon and and just move forward into married life. It's probably going to look a little bit different than they're expecting or or what they're used to, God, but I know you're going to bless them and you're going to use them just to further your gospel and, and further the kingdom. So. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your son. Uh, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So Amen. let me raise a glass <laughs> to Tyler and Hannah Anderson. Hey. Let's go. So first of all, before I say anything, I want to say to my daughter, Hannah, you look absolutely stunning. Yes. And you are so blessed that you take after your mother. <laughs> because 90% of that beauty came from your mom and I am low balling okay so you know the days and weeks leading up to today have brought back a lot of memories for me Um, and as you know Hannah has a twin brother Grant and it was always a lot of fun having twins people would stop you in the mall just to look at your babies and I always remember at night when it was time to go to bed and try to get them to sleep and Laura would take Grant and I would take Hannah. Grant was the easy one. He would fall asleep as soon as the lights went out. You, on the other hand, were the total opposite. Because I would sit in the living room with the lights off. We'd sit in the glider and I'd try to get you to sleep. And most nights you fell asleep before I did. But there were those occasional nights where maybe I fell asleep before you did. And Laura would walk into the living room and they'd see us both asleep in the glider and your head was hanging off my lap and you were about to slide off on the floor. (laughs) She got so mad at me. (laughs) But I never did drop you. Good. And then as you got older, you still kept me up at night with all these questions you used to have. Do you remember? You used to ask me, you know, what if I die tonight? What if you die tonight? She still asks that. I know. Well, get ready. What if something happens to mommy? What if a tornado hits our house? What if our house catches on fire? And it was the same cycle of questions almost every night. But you know what? I'm glad you kept me up at night because it was those nights where I sat by your bed and we talked about your worries and we prayed. Sometimes I just prayed for you to go to sleep. But it was those nights that we spent together just talking about life. Those are the most precious memories I have, and I will cherish those for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And then I want to tell you my, my favorite story about Hannah was she was about three years old, and we were living in Corinth in um, our old house, and Laura lost her wedding ring. And she swore that it was somewhere in the house and I turned the house upside down trying to find that ring. I looked in cushions, I looked everywhere, I could not find it. But she swore it was in that house and I thought, you know, what happened? The only thing, the only conclusion I could come up with is one of you two grabbed mommy's ring and flushed it down the toilet. That's the only thing I could think of. 
And finally, I just gave up looking for it. And then we moved to our new house in Castle Hills. And so, you know, we move all the furniture out. And I thought, well, maybe I'll find it then. But it never turned up. So I thought, well, it's gone for good. And so probably a few months later, it might have been even a year later, you're playing in the, in the living room. You're actually behind the chair. And there's a, a, a fake ficus tree that sits behind the chair. And it, it has kind of a, a styrofoam base. And she's back there playing around. I go, Hannah, what are you doing back there? Get out of there. And she goes, oh, okay, okay, well, let me get my toys out. And she's pulling toys out. And I said, okay, now, come on. And she goes, wait a minute, let me get my ring out. <laughs> and I'm thinking, no, nah, this can't be the same ring. <laughs> she pulls out her mother's wedding ring. And I, I, I can't tell you how happy we were <laughs> when yeah. you found that. But we still haven't figured out how it got there. I mean, we know that... I know it wasn't me. I know it wasn't your mother. <laughs> Haley was too small. You, you could blame Grant, but you're still a person of interest to me. So, um, but I tell that story for there, there's two lessons behind that. One, don't lose your wedding, wedding ring. <laughs> and two, always remember that it's not about the ring or any material thing that you have. It's about the love that you two have for each other and the love that you have for the Lord. Yeah. That will last forever. So I'm so glad you have that. Exactly. Then fast forward to 2018. Okay, this is my last story. <laughs> but you met Han or you met uh, Tyler, and I could tell that you'd met somebody special. You just had this glow about you, and so I, I asked you. I said, "Well, tell me a little bit about Tyler. What's he like?" And she said, "Well, he likes to fish. He's got his own YouTube fishing channel. He's on the A&M fishing team." And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking. The only fish, the only types of fish Hannah knows about is fried, baked, and grilled. So I don't know how this is going to work. But then I thought about it, and I thought, well, he likes to catch fish, and uh, she likes to cook fish, so this is perfect. <laughs> but Tyler, I want you to know that since Hannah was a little girl, Laura and I prayed that one day she would meet a man after God's own heart. And you have been the answer to that prayer. And to Brian and Michelle... I want to tell you what a pleasure that it's been to get to know, where are you anyway? Oh, you're back there. Okay. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to get to know your son these last couple of years. He's bringing so much laughter and energy into our home. It seems like he never has a bad day. Even when he loses his kayak somewhere on I-35 <laughs> between Waco and Dallas, he still seems to have a smile on his face. Is it too horrible. soon? It's a horrible night. <laughs> But Laura and I welcome him into our family, and you have our promise we will treat him as our own son. And Hannah, I assure you that you're going to be a great wife and eventually a great mother. The reason I know that is you've had the best teacher in your mom. She's taught you how to love, how to support, and how to care for a family, and even how to fight for a family. She's always been there for you, and, and she always will be. Yeah. Hannah, your mother and I are so proud of you and the godly woman that you've become, the way the love of Christ shines through in you. And I thank God for allowing me the privilege of being your dad. <laughs> it's been a blessing to Laura and I to watch your relationship grow, building your relationship on godly principles. Your marriage is a gift to each other, more valuable than any other gift. Yeah. And my hope is that you will celebrate each day of your marriage. Even some days it might be just finding Hannah's car keys, <laughs> which we did that not too long ago. Yeah. Or maybe Tyler just caught that one tiny little fish. But celebrate each one of those days because each day that you wake up and have breath in your lungs is a day worth celebrating. I want you to look around at all the people here who love you and are cheering you on. There's a lot of people who finish the race here on earth before they could see this day. But I know I'm thinking of grandma, mama and papa, Tyler, your grandparents, that they're looking down from heaven and they're cheering you on just as we are here. And I want you to cherish this day for the rest of your lives if you, as you run this race together. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses in honor of the bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. 
Tyler Anderson. May God richly bless the rest of your days. Thank you, Jerry. She spins and she sways to whatever song plays without a care in the world. And I'm sitting here wearing the weight of the world on my shoulders. It's been a long day and there's still work to do. She's pulling at me saying that I need you. There's a ball at the castle and I've been invited. And I need to practice my dancing. Oh, please, Daddy, please. So I dance with Cinderella while she's here in my arms. Cause I know something the prince never knew. my dancing Let's make some noise for him right now. Let's give it up. Congratulations, guys. Said to. <laughs> Is it grandpa Let's make some noise for him right now. Let's give it up. 
All right, you ready? Okay. Gonna go down here. Nice. Oh, that's a thick cake. That is a thick cake. Gosh. And then again, just from this angle. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> hey, that's okay. We got down, good. Okay. And now let's get this thing here. You ready? You get the plate, I'll scoop it. Oh no. How do you do this? It's cut. Oh gosh, don't do that. If you get your knife and put it straight down and then flip it on the yeah. Like this? Perfect, that's, yeah. Yeah, you kind of push it Hey, yeah. there we go. Woo! Got it. Okay, now, ready? Now we feed each other, right? Give me yeah, a lot of, I want a lot of cake. Okay. You want some frosting? A little bit of frosting. Okay. Ready? Like this? Ready? Oh wait. At the same time? Same time. Here we go. No, no, no. Okay, I'll get smaller bites. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> hey! Yeah. Love. Love you. Love you. Okay. Okay. I was a boat stuck in a bottle that never got the chance to touch the sea. Just forgot on the shelf, the wind and the sails Going nowhere with no one to I was one in a hundred bit A burnout star in a galaxy Just lost in the sky Wondering why everyone else shines out on me But I came to life when I first kissed you Best me, hug his arms around you Chance to touch the sea. I can't hide from now. 